welcome back to Solving Trusses. Today I have this cantilever truss for us to solve. So without further ado, let's get straight in. Let's start off by drawing a free body diagram and then finding out if this truss is determinate. So I'm going to start off by removing my pin at joint four and replacing it with two reaction forces. So V4 and H4. And I'm also going to remove this roller here and replace it with H1. Now first let's check if this is determinate. So for that we need to first consider what are our unknowns. Our unknowns are going to be the number of reactions and the number of members. We have three reactions, we have seven members, that gives us a total of ten unknowns. Our knowns are the number of joints times two, so that's the number of equations we can write, so that is two times five in this case, and that is ten. And since the number of knowns equals the number of unknowns, this is determinate, and we can solve it using the method of joints. Before we start solving using the method of joints, we need to find our reactions. So let's do that now. First thing, I see that there is only one force in the vertical direction, so I'm going to start off by doing the sum of forces in the y direction equals zero. And just a reminder, I am using the right hand rule, so let's just put it here. So these are my positive directions. So I've got v4 in the positive y, minus 5, minus 6 equals 0, so V4 works out as 11 kilonewtons. I'm just going to highlight that. The next thing I'm going to do, I am going to do the sum of moments around joint 4 equals 0, so this being my positive moment direction, uh, and that is because V4 and H4 both go through point 0.4, so I'm eliminating these two forces from my equation. So let's see what I've got. I've got H1, which creates a positive moment, times four, minus that external load of five, which creates a negative moment, times three, and minus this six, which also creates a negative moment and has a lever arm of six. So four H1, works out as 51, and that means that H1 is 12.75 kilonewtons. And now that I have H1, I can use sum of forces in the x direction to find out what H4 is. So in the x direction, I have H1 plus H4 and actually I don't have any other external forces, so that equals zero, and H4 equals minus H1, and that gives me minus 12.75 kilonewtons. And what I can do now is I can replace these reactions that I've assumed with the correct values and correct dimensions. So V4, we said, was 11. H4 worked out as minus 12.75, so that means that I've assumed this direction incorrectly, and it is actually in this way, and I've got 12.75 in this direction, and H1 worked out as 12.75 in the direction I've assumed. I can also do, at this point, a quick check if I'm unsure about my reactions. So let's do a check. We can do that by doing, say, moments around joint one. So around joint one, I've got the positive reaction force from the 12.75 at joint four times the distance of four, and then I've got minus five times three, and I've also got minus 6 times 6. And if I calculate that, 
this works out as 51, this works out as minus 15, and this works out as minus 36, and that indeed equals zero. So I've calculated my reactions correctly. And now we can move on to solving this truss using the method of joints. So as you recall, for the method of joints, I am going to assume that everything is in tension. That way, anything positive is indeed in tension and anything negative is in compression. Uh, I also need to start off from any joint that has only two unknowns because I only have two equations of equilibrium that I can write per joint. So before we begin, let us just find out what that alpha is, okay? Because I will need to find it at some point. So if I just look at the triangle, and this is alpha, this is four, this is three, I can say that tan alpha is four over three. And if I do inverse tan on my calculator, I find out that alpha is 53.1 degrees. And that allows me now to start from any joint that has two unknowns. If I look here, I can see that really I can only start from either joint three or joint four. Let's start from joint four, as it's probably much easier. I'm starting off by drawing F four five and F one four. So these are my external forces in joint four. I'm also going to draw the reaction forces. So I've got 11 and I've got 12.75. And I can start off here by doing sum of moments in y equals zero. So I've got 11 in the positive direction minus F14 equals zero. So F14 works out as 11 kilonewtons. Moving on to the sum of forces in the x direction. And in this case, I have F4, five in the positive x minus 12.75 and nothing else. So that equals zero and F4, five equals 12.75 kilonewtons. And as always, I'm just going to straight away write it on my trust. It'll give me a good indication of what I found, what's in compression, what's in tension, and to what joint I can move on next. So one four was 11, that's this one here, and four five was 12.75. Moving on to joint three, also with only two unknowns. Let's draw that one out. So I've got F23 here. I've got F35 here. I've got alpha, and I also have this external load of six kilonewtons. Let's start off in this case with the sum of forces in Y. And the reason is, if I start off with the x direction, I have F23, which I don't know yet, and I also have a component of F35. So for that reason, let's start off with sum of forces in y equals zero. So I've got F35 in the positive y direction, right, it's going up, it's sine alpha minus six equals zero, and so F35 equals plus six over sine alpha, I know that alpha is 53.1, I found that already, and so this works out as 7.5 kilonewtons. And now that I have F35, I can easily go on to do the sum of forces in the x direction equals zero, and I have minus F23, because that's in the negative x direction, and also minus F3, five cos alpha equals zero. So F two three is gonna equal minus F three five cos alpha. So that'll be minus seven point five cos fifty three point one 
and that works out as minus four and a half kilonewtons. So once again, let's put this on our truss and continue. So three five was seven and a half, that's this member here, and this member here was minus four and a half, which means that it is a compression member. I can now see by looking at my truss that I can go to any joint. Each joint now from the remaining ones, one, two, and five, only have two unknowns. I'm gonna to go to joint two, because that is the easiest one with everything being at right angles, right? So if I draw that out, I've got F23, I've got F12, I've got F25, and I've got this external load of five kilonewtons. Uh, let us start off with some of forces in the y direction. Okay, with this being my positive one. So I've got F to five minus five equals zero. So F to five equals five kilonewtons. And now to the X direction. So sum of forces in X equals zero. So I've got F to three minus F one, two, equals zero, so F, one, two, equals F, two, three, and F, two, three, I know is minus four and a half kilonewton, so I found that as well. And once again, let's go and put them on our truss. So two, five worked out as five, and one, two worked out as minus four and a half. And I can see now that I only have one truss member left to find, that is member one five, and I can go to either joint one or joint five. I'm gonna go with joint one. Though it really, really doesn't matter. So, once again, drawing out my free body diagram of joint one. So I've got F one two, I've got F one five, which is my only unknown, and I've got F one four, and I've also got this reaction force here of 12.75. Let's start off by doing the sum of forces in the y direction. So in the y direction, I've got F one four, and I've also got F one, five, you know, just a reminder, this is alpha here, so that would be F one, five sine alpha equals zero. So F one, five is gonna be minus F one, four divided by sine alpha. F one, four, we already found, and that was 11. So I've got minus 11 divided by sine 53.1, and that works out as minus 13.75 kilonewton. Now at this point, I have found everything that I need in my truss. I have all the members. Let's just write that in, minus 13.75. Uh, but it is always good to do a check. So that's what we're gonna do now. We're going to use the x direction, which I haven't checked, as our check. So sum of forces in x equals zero. So let's see what we've got. We've got 12.75, that's the reaction force, uh, plus F12, plus a component of F15, so that's F15 cos alpha equals zero. So 12.75 plus F12 one two is minus 4.5 and f15 is minus 13.75 and that is cos 53.1 and if you put all of that in your calculator 
you will indeed find out that this equals zero and therefore this check has worked out and most chances are that my calculations are correct. I can continue to check by going to joint five and checking joint five and making doubly sure and triply sure that everything is correct, but I'll leave that up to you. So thanks for joining me once again to solve some trusses. I hope you've enjoyed as much as you can solving this cantilever truss. And I hope to see you again when we solve some more trusses, beams, and also trusses using the method of sections. Bye for now.